Christmas. All right, it feels good to say that, and you can legitimately say that because it's Christmas Eve and it carries over. So Merry Christmas. Uh, welcome, everybody. We're delighted that you're here. I'm Jeff Bridgman, pastor of First Presbyterian Church, and uh, delighted that many of you have loaned your children for this event. It's one of those things you remember all your life of what you did at Christmas uh, in the church pageant. So uh, I think you'll enjoy this and be blessed by it. Um, I'm not going to ask you to get up and greet everybody, but would you just turn around and say hi to the people around you? Wish them a Merry Christmas. Would you just do that? All right. So this is a, this is a kid-run organization, and uh, to lead us tonight in our opening prayer, uh, Lauren is going to... Is it Lauren? Lauren's going to come up. Lauren Watson's going to come up. Where is she? And lead us in prayer. And your microphone is right there. Your sister stole it for me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today and letting all these people come to the church. I am so thankful for everything that you do for us. I'm also thankful for food, water, and shelter. Thank you for always being here to support everyone through hard times. We are praying for those who are sick. We are praying for our families as well. We are also praying for all the kids in the Ukraine. May they see joy this Christmas. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You can take that back to her. And we're going to sing now. Maybe you'd like to stand if, you, if you're able and sing with us. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I want to invite you to sing along if you know these songs. Any of them in this whole show, feel free to just sing it out, okay? This is called Light of the World. Longs for a little bit of hope, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. A child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from a sea of hurt, oh come.
Except for a little bit of hope, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. Go ahead and take a seat, everybody. So how does your family keep time? How do you keep time? Is it just by a watch or have you had a calendar and everybody's going by what's happening next on the calendar? You know, my granddaughter and grandson actually have these paper chains that they hang from the refrigerator. And so as an important date gets closer, they take off one of the, the paper chains until they get close and they know now, now is the time. Well, in the church, we keep time by candles. And for the four Sundays of Advent, we're lighting a candle to remember faith, hope, joy, and peace. And tonight, we're lighting the fifth one as well, which is the Christ candle and the coming of the Christ. So the Zavasky family is here, and they're going to read, and then they're going to light the candles for us as we enter into this Christmas time. Jennifer? Tonight, we light the ultimate candle for the Christ child and sing songs of joy to declare he has arrived. The focus of our Advent journey is completed right before us. God's gift of love has come in the quiet of the night and the flesh to people of humble means like you and me. The one who will be great and accomplish the most incredible act of love for us is now just a small, vulnerable, swaddled infant child beloved by us all. Now it's the time to welcome him into our lives. We welcome you, baby Jesus. We open our hearts and invite you in. Show us your love. Give us true forgiveness and make us into people who will do what you would do. We will tell everyone the good, good news. Joy to the world. Joy to you and me. Jesus has come. Um, we're just trying to get connection with the satellite station here. Are they in? Just a minute, please. Are you ready? I'm ready. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, run. Let's roll it. Good evening and welcome to KTTV Israel. We're reporting live in from the city of Bethlehem. We're reporting from the actual studio station. My name is Michelle Danley, one of your newscasters. And I'm the other guy, Mr. Phil. Mr. Phil, isn't this an exciting night to be with everyone live on Christmas Eve? Totally. Now, I heard there's some really bizarre things going on out there. So we thought, why not go ahead and send 
our reporters to the spot to interview around Bethlehem. What in the world is going on there? We're getting all kinds of calls into our call center, and it's just a little crazy. So let's unfold this story. Are you ready? Again, my name is Michelle Danley. And I'm Phil. Yes, from KTTV Israel. We're going to go ahead and go live out to an inn. I heard there's some really bizarre stuff going on in that inn. Miss Caitlin Watson, are you there? Are you there? She's on. Um, she's out there at the inn. Are you there, Miss Caitlin? Thanks, Michelle. It has been a wild night here on the streets of Bethlehem. I'll have to do several interviews to be able to tell you the whole story. First, we'll meet a local innkeeper, Britton. Can you tell us how this whole thing got started? Well, Caitlin, it all started when Caesar made that announcement for everyone to go to their hometown to be counted in the census. With everybody rushing around, all the inns filled up pretty quickly. Oh, yes. The census has thrown us all into a big frenzy. Oh, for sure. Well, we'd fill up, and it was getting late when this young couple stopped in and asked for a room. I told them that we were full, but the man insisted, saying that his wife was about to just about to have a baby. And that she looks so young, you know. And when I mean young, I mean really young. But I, I knew all the inns were full, so I gave him a spot in the barn. It was with the animals, but at least it was warm and dry. Very kind of you to make space for them, even in a busy season. Thank you, Britton, for giving us the beginning of this crazy story. That's right, folks. You heard it right here live on KTTV Israel, the breaking news station, 3 p.m. live news. Thank you very much, Miss Caitlin, for reporting in. We're so grateful. We'd love us now to sing the first Noel. together.
and back here to the new station, KTDV Israel. My name is Michelle Danley. And I'm Phil. And we are your 3 p.m. live anchor reporters. It's so good to be together on Christmas Eve. Thank you out there to Miss Caitlin that gave us a wonderful report at what was going on in the inn. And, and I heard him singing off in the horizon. He's on down, he's on down the road. But that innkeeper gave him a safe place. We're so grateful. Anyways, I heard there's also some crazy stuff going on out there on the streets. I mean, camel pileups the whole bit since this census took place. I'm going to go ahead and see if Miss Allie is out there. Allie, she's one of our live reporters. Miss Allie, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I got Michelle? you, Michelle. Can you hear yeah, me? I got you. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Michelle. Um, it looks like we have a five camel pileup on the main road to Bethlehem and miles of donkeys leading in and out of the city. You should expect your commute to take at least a day longer than usual. We've got everyone, and their mother, trying to get back to their hometowns, and there's way more traffic than we're used to seeing. Back to you, Michelle. Yep, you heard it right here on KTTV Israel. There's a file, five pile camel pile up in some areas, and there's also four camel pileups. So please, please allow yourself enough time if you're trying to get to your hometown for the census. I know everyone's in a hurry trying to check in and hopefully be able to continue to be with their families. I want to go ahead and go way over. I heard there's some bizarre thing going on in Bethlehem. I want to hear from this young couple. There's something strange going. Mr. Phil, are you there? I'm here, boss. Mr. Michelle. Phil, can you go ahead and report in, please, for this young couple? Like, it's kind of bizarre. What's going on? Yeah, I'm here now with Mary and Joseph, the couple who had to stay in the barn. Uh, Joseph, can you tell me more about the events leading up to how you had to sleep with uh, animals? Uh, well, we're not doing much sleeping, but I'll tell you how we ended up here. We would planned it all out. We were going to get back to Bethlehem right before the baby was due. Be counted. So a few days ago, we're on the road, and Mary grabs me and says, Joseph, it's time. And I say, I know, I know, stop stressing. But she says, no, it's time for the baby right now. Uh, I think he thought I was kidding or something, but no. The baby is ready to come into this world. I mean, my water broke, and the baby is coming. We didn't have time to do anything else yet, and we hadn't even gotten a room. Right, so I ran to the nearest inn to ask for a room, but they said everything was full. So I explained that... We needed something now. So they found us a spot in the manger barn thing. I wouldn't give it five stars, but it wasn't bad. Well, I guess it wouldn't really matter as long as you guys had a place to stay, right? Uh, Mary, were you stressed at all to have to give birth in a barn? Um, I mean, it wasn't my ideal birth plan, but it was actually a very easy labor. And once the baby was born, it was so funny because all the animals crowded around to see him like they knew he was special or something. But even though we didn't have a proper crib or bed, he was still a beautiful little baby. Stand with us, will you?
Thank you, Mary. Sounds like quite the experience. Glad you guys found a place to stay. I wonder what was so different about this baby. I wonder what, why the animals were crowding around it. I wonder how Joseph felt. I wonder how Mary felt. And with that, we'll get back to you, Michelle. Yes, hi, my name is Michelle Danley, and I'm with KTTV Israel, here live in the studio. What a blessing to be together on Christmas Eve. Speaking of blessings, there's something going on out there. People say it's a blessing. I find it to be a real bizarre experience. And the journalistic hat on me needs to find out what is going on out there. There's all kinds of weird weather and stars and I don't know. Let's dissect this. Miss Allie, are you out there? Miss Allie, could you give us a report in please? Yes, Michelle. Sadly, our weather person is out sick today. So me, the traffic reporter, will be taking over. And... And um, I wanted to give you a heads up about the strange star hovering just over Bethlehem and shining far brighter than usual. It seemed that the star just stopped over the city and from other, white, 
eyewitnesses we've heard tonight, it might be related to that baby that was just born. I'll keep you updated on any other signs or stars, but that's it for now. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Allie, for filling in for Brooklyn tonight, who's sick, who's coming in at the last minute. We're so grateful for you and being on our KTTV Israel team. With that, we're going to continue to unfold these unexplained events going on tonight. We've got a reporter in the field. I mean, literally in the field. Um, let's see. I don't know if we, it might be a pretty static connection. I'm not sure. Uh, let's, let's try. Are you there out in the fields? Are you there? Oh, we're not sure. Allie, could you help us out? They, they're, they're just not hearing. Are you there? Can you hear me? Miss Lauren is reporting in from the fields of Bethlehem, and we're just looking to give a report. What is going on out there? What is my line? Can you hear me? No, yeah, we're having it, bad. It's a little Can, glitchy out. Is it glitchy? <laughs> glitchy here. I can't quite hear you yet. Oh, can you hear me now? Starting to connect. Okay, it's connecting. <laughs> Oh, good. Hi, Miss Caitlin. Could you please give us a live report? What is going on out there? Well, thanks, Michelle. I'm here with a shepherd who has had quite the scare tonight. Lauren, can you tell the crowd more? Well, Caitlin, it started out as a normal enough night. We were just watching over the flock, having a little snack. When all of a sudden, this thing popped out of nowhere. It seemed kind of hard to describe what it looked like, actually. It was kind of scary, but also kind of beautiful in a way. Well, what did this thing do? It was all so bizarre. It happened like this. <laughs> but that was pretty hard to do, as you can only imagine. That was all pretty confusing, but we figured we should go check it out, just in case. That is some exciting news. It was, and then it got weirder. Some of its friends popped up, and they all said, Glory to God and people to all people on earth. So then we rushed off to Bethlehem to see if it was true. Why don't you all join us? You've heard it in the fields first, folks. I'm going to get back to Bethlehem to see this baby for myself. Thanks so much, Caitlin, for reporting in. That is some pretty exciting news. I mean, let's really think about that. 
We're telling everyone this great news on the news station. I'm hearing everyone talk about it. I mean, these people have waited for a Messiah for how long? They were getting Nancy, and I think it's coming. I really, really want to go to Bethlehem to see for myself because, you know, I am a journalist, and I got to see it. How about you, Phil? I'm down. You down? Mm -hmm. All right. You all down? I mean, we got to see this. We got to see this. Um, let's go ahead and light, turn on our lights. And I'm going to need that to um, light my way as we sing Silent Night. beautiful baby is already changing lives. I'm going to cherish this moment forever. Imagine this great love, the greatest present of all, Jesus, our long-awaited Messiah. Love for the whole world, love for one another. Oh, I can't help but think about others, others that need, others we help and we all lean into our world. see this baby I everyone let's go see it i mean we got to see this and give a report sorry we're closing down the news station <laughs> closed i gotta see this going on i gotta see for my own two eyes oh boy <gasps> the baby the baby baby jesus tonight we invite all of you out there to just ask yourselves, what are you getting wrapped up in? Are you wrapped up in social media? Are you wrapped up in making that house oh so perfect for the holidays? Maybe you're wrapped up in the busyness because we think busyness is productive. We're not sure, but we do know this, don't we kids? We're challenging you to wrap yourself in sweet Jesus Sweet, sweet Jesus, the Jesus that holds compassion, the Jesus that, that is representing hope, love, compassion, trust, and honesty. And with that, the children this year decided the offering for today's service, 
They wanted it to go to an organization that helps children. So they chose the Crittenden House. And we love this organization. FPC has been in partnership with them for many years. And they help families rehabilitate after trauma. They care not only about the mom and dad, but they care about the littlest ones, the middle ones, the teenagers, the young adults. So if it's on your heart tonight to give offering, there'll be offering baskets as you leave the sanctuary, okay? And we're grateful. We're grateful for all of you. But remember, what are you getting yourself wrapped up into? And with that, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! And we want to end on Joy to the World. This is the Chris Tomlin version. It's a little modern, and we like to boogie here. So get, out of, get up off of your seats and have fun, snack, clap. Give it up. Let's worship our sweet Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. We hope that you join us for Coco and Candy Canes on the Sanctuary. And I heard the sheep are out there for photos. All right, let's give it up. One, two, three, four. Oh